Yeah, it's some artist James Pate, visual artist James Pate, and I hail from uh, Dayton, Ohio, and I'm here in Bradenton, Florida, um, to interact with the community um, about this exhibit, uh, my artwork, uh, Ken Killing Ken. It's a series of uh, charcoal drawings, and um, it's uh, KKK, Ken Killing Ken. It's a metaphor where I'm uh, juxtaposing uh, the Ku Klux Klan with black-on-black uh, -black crime. These images, you know, they're designed to uh, have primarily uh, uh, students look at them, and it's to uh, sort of um, convey to them um, what not to do. I started the series in, in 2000, and I've been working on them throughout the years, uh, sort of spotty throughout the years, and there are thus far uh, 13 of these uh, panels and I, uh, I've done more since then but uh, this collection that's here in Bradenton is, is the 13th. I think the message is, is gotten across however as sort of a personal a personal uh, protest you know I'm just continuing to work on this series as long as this situation is happening there are aspects and situations that I could communicate and try to, to help out and uh, help out with stomping out this situation. Throughout the country, and I would go different places, you know, you visit relatives and whatnot, and this is prior to actually starting on this series. And for a number of years now, I would hear different people say in the community that we black people have put the Ku Klux Klan out of business because of the fact that the Klan originally was this terrorist group that intimidated our neighborhoods and hung and lynched us and, and incarcerated us. And so instead of the Klan doing it, we're doing it. And so after hearing that repeatedly, as an artist, my response and my vision sort of kicked in to say, well, what does that look like? And so I decided I would illustrate the uh, perpetrators and show them in traditional clan uh, uh, robes and pointed hats and so forth, you know, carrying out these acts. And I wanted to infuse other historical imagery, you know, to show that we as black people have this rich legacy that is being destroyed through these acts. First of all, it's true, we are killing each other in mass. But, it, but it's a condition. There's a reason for it. And I'm trying to stir up some dialogue so that we can sort of discover some ideas for solutions. So, so it is happening in that way. And, um, and I know that we're black people. We have such a rich legacy dating all the way back to pre-Egypt and ancient Egypt and on to today where black people have um, made very significant contributions to this society, to, to mankind, quite frankly. So um, when I think about those achievements and when I think about that occurrence and then what's happening now and juxtaposed to now, it, it, um, it caused me to scratch my head. And through these pieces of artwork, I'm sort of throwing a tantrum about the situation. And um, I just want to find a solution. And I figured that if I do something visually, it could, um, it could cause uh, primarily uh, uh, students or you know, kids to look, stop, think, reflect, and think about the destruction toward the neighborhood. And, and hopefully they would decide, okay, this is not something that I want to participate in. And the reason why is because of this rich heritage, this rich legacy that's invested in me. The sacrifices that were made so that I could walk down the street and not have to step aside and give a white person leeway just because they're white. Uh, there were, these sacrifices are very noble and these are reasons why you know, I shouldn't cause this kind of devastation, you know, particularly uh, uh, in my neighborhood 
but anywhere, anywhere in the world, because we're all relatives on this planet. Um, the hope is, is built into the fact that, as I mentioned, this legacy and this rich heritage is invested in all of us. And what we have in us is sort of blindsided right now. It's, um, there's a distraction that's taken place. And the hope is that if we can develop our youth and assist you know, in their development, that they will reach a point in their maturity where, um, where they would, you know, turn their lives around or get more serious about skill building so that they can make a contributions to their own lives and to the lives of, 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 of the community. So, so, the, so the hope is in just looking at the, uh, at the imagery, looking at the, uh, the historical imagery and getting the historic imagery and getting inspiration from it. The input is sort of, uh, <clears throat> sort of mysterious to them. Um, they're sort of perplexed because they recognize the greatness of black people as well. And so there's this misunderstanding as to why this is going on. Um, it's difficult to, to understand, you know, and it's, it's easy to say that they're, that they're thugs, that they're, you know, this is how black people are, and, you know, all of the uh, sort of cliches and stereotypes, you know, but at the same time, they know of this, this history, or at least they're, they're even witnessing it. They're seeing it. They're seeing the achievement of black people, and it's, and it's confusing Yet, at the same time, it's very easy for them to be critical. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's a lot of contradictions, you know, that's, that's taking place. And I do know, just as an artist and just as a citizen, it's, it's unnatural. Yeah, so it's something that's causing, and there's a series of things, um, and it's very complex, but there's a serious series of things that's, that's causing this. <clears throat> uh, when that started to happen, uh, I thought that at some point someone is going to bring that up and ask me what's my take on that and is it related and, and that kind of thing. And um, uh, I'm glad that that question came up because it's related from the standpoint of, okay, you see what the cops are doing. and we're doing it to ourselves. It's, uh, it's, it directly relates to the fact that I'm saying that the Ku Klux Klan was doing that to us and now we're doing it to ourselves. So here it is, you know, the situation with the cops and, um, you know, this overreaction, in my opinion, you know, that, that led to this death. So this is more of the reason why we should not be killing ourselves because there are there are people, at least historically, who are who are against black people for whatever reason. No, no, there wasn't there wasn't a uh, particular spark, other than people repeatedly saying that uh, that we put the Klan out of business. So the occurrence of it itself is the spark. And being an artist. This is the way that I'm responding to it. Um, it's been happening for a number of years now, and it's in my community, you know, and I have a great love for humanity and definitely my community. And so it's, it's my kin, so it's, it's my relatives, um, naturally, just naturally my, my relatives. So it didn't take like any personal situation. It's, 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 it's personal by default. In my uh, in my view, and and later on in the series, after I actually I was I was complete with I was com I had completed the uh, thirteen pieces, and my nephew was gunned down in Cincinnati. You're right aware, and um, and he got caught in a crossfire after a teen party, and um, but it didn't take that. It didn't take that. It, all it did was just um, made me realize just how. Um, just how uh, destructive, you know, even more so yeah. after that experience.
as I was producing these pieces, I would think that at some point is going to hit home, even though it's already hitting home, but, um, you know, so to speak, you know, it, I figured it would hit home and something would probably eventually happen. There's so many factors to where it's, a lot of it is over my head. You know, I was wanting to show this end result. Like, look, look at what this is doing and why it's happening. There's a lot of debate. There's a lot of reasons. You know, within the pieces, there's this hidden critique on racism because I think racism has some indirect role, you know, that it plays um, the cause, conditions, you know, for African-American males, you know, to be, uh, um, you know, sabotage and there are roadblocks and there are all these things that happens you know, you know, with unfair uh, incarceration and, you know, unfair sentencing and, you know, there's uh, the infiltration of drugs and the infiltration of guns, you know, into, uh, into the environment. Um, there's drug, there's the drug trade, you know, there's, um, you know, you get out of jail and, and there's no, uh, there's no other opportunities for employment and that kind of thing. And like, this is all I know, so I'm going to risk, you know, being a drug dealer. And, you know, and none of this stuff is good excuses. But in terms of, you know, reasons and why and, you know, trying to answer the questions, you know, these are some of the assessments that I make. And, and, um, and it's debatable. Um, but it's about solutions. But prior to the solutions, you, you, you have to make the right assessments so that you can go down the right road with trying to solve the problems. Um, so there, there, are, there are issues more than even what I just mentioned. Um, there are a lot of people with a lot of different ideas. You know, there, there are fatherless homes. Um, you know, there, there's the argument that some fatherless homes should be fatherless because the fathers themselves might be bad influences. Um, so there's, there's a lot of contradiction and a lot of um, frustration and, you know, and um, as an artist, you know, I just feel like I can just express, you know, the frustration and I can just hope that it will, yeah. you know, change the mindset of any given person, you know, that might, you know, practice these sorts of, uh, uh, this sort of activity. Well, education is always a solution for, uh, for any given problem, you know, to be educated about something, you know, can cause you to um, work your way to a better uh, condition. But, um, but I use that particular image in there. Actually, it's a kid that's in a, uh, a, a college a sweatshirt, just says CSU in, in a college style font. And actually that kid is in the crossfire and I, in the image, I composed the split in his body, and one side is rendered in, in detail, and the other side is sort of faded out. So it just represents that kid being in a crossfire and never reaching, you know, their goal, you know, to become this citizen that will make contributions to their community. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's that's what that is. Is that the point is a kid caught in a cr cr crossfire? and not, uh, you know, not being able to go on with their lives and discover their lives and end up helping, helping us all in some, some fashion. Okay, well, I, I was just one of those kids that, um, that was uh, naturally drawn to art uh, before realizing what art even was. So, um, so I just had a natural knack, a natural knack to, uh, see uh, proportion and a natural knack to see and to figure out design and composition. And growing up in Cincinnati, Ohio, you know, I went to a, uh, uh, a neighborhood art center, it was called the Arts Consortium, mm -hmm. and they had an instructor there that introduced me to some uh, drawing uh, methods and some drawing techniques. And, and at this time, I was in grade school. and. For some reason, I latched onto it. I, I comprehended it. It was very clear to me. I, you know, I understood it. Um, you know, on this level, to where I just uh, 
just started practicing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so largely, you know, I was self-taught. I, um, I, I, I did attend college <clears throat> at uh, Central State University in Ohio, but it was just for maybe a semester or two because I really couldn't afford to do it, uh, you know, coming from the projects and not having the support, you know, uh, not having the resources to sustain myself in college. So mm -hmm. I, um, I, I, I had to drop out, I had to leave. And, but I was an artist and then I knew I was an artist. And so I just went on to just practice doing art and just gaining the skill from, from just practicing and doing uh, projects and doing commissions. And um, just from having a, a skill level early on that was proficient, I was able to uh, to get commissions and get jobs, and and I ended up doing um, art education just from having this ability to communicate what I knew, you know, to the students and to kids, and it just kind of grew. And that skill of being able to teach what I knew, it it came natural as well, and so I so I, I do art education and and work in my studio in Dayton, Ohio. You know, to this day, I'm uh, second, uh, second to the last of seven of seven kids, and, wow. and I and I was born in Birmingham, Alabama, actually, and my uh, my mom passed away. I, I didn't get a chance to know my mother actually, because I was just too young to to remember, and her grandmother took over as as our parent, and she passed away, and so my grandfather came down from Birmingham, uh, came down from Cincinnati, Ohio and got the seven of us, brought us up to Cincinnati. And my older brother, he would draw some time. And that was, that was I, I would say, the first person that I saw actually, you know, rendering and drawing. And, and, and since role modeling is a natural thing, you know, I just gravitated toward that. He, he was a male like I was. And the, the, the rest of my siblings are sisters. I have five sisters and, and one brother. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so I just started, just started drawing, and my uh, my grandmother in Cincinnati, I um, she would tell me things that I would do as a baby, as a kid, and stuff that I don't even remember doing. So, and my sisters, you know, they always was encouraging me, and a lot of times, you know, they would since they were older, you know, they would have uh, projects from school and homework and art projects and, and they would have me do it and you know I would draw graphs and things like that so the encouragement was always there yeah definitely you know I work in in a number of different mediums you know ranging from from graphite to uh, to oil paint you know uh, pen and ink you know acrylic I can do watercolor um, marker renderings um, there's something about knowing how to draw so that it lends itself to being able to uh, transfer to other mediums and gain an understanding of the character of that particular medium. Um, I feel like if I had a high enough interest to, um, to sculpt, I would, I would be able to do that. Um, so, so medium preference, um, I don't really have a preference. Uh, sometimes I'll work in charcoal or any given medium because of feel. For instance, this, the last couple of years, I've been doing a lot of drawing because, charcoal drawing because that's what I'm feeling. And I'm going into this oil paint phase right now. So back at my studio, I, I have some oil paintings that's in the works that's, that's on my easels. Mm -hmm. and, and my visions is, I'm seeing color for some reason. So, yeah. so it's sort of a mood thing when it, when it comes to our mediums for me. Um, and right now I'm in this, this painting, oil painting uh, uh, mood um, uh, often. Because um, sometimes you, you know, you'll see a vision and you'll have a concept and you may figure that it will work best in color or it, may, it will work best in black and white or it, it may work best as a, um, as a sculpture sometimes. So, so yeah, so the concept can dictate the medium. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes ability can dictate the medium. You know, you, you have us as artists that are um, 
better at some mediums than others. And so they just gravitate to that comfort. And mm -hmm. so every concept might be a painting. Uh, but I tend to I tend to jump around a little bit more because yeah. uh, my mood and interest and uh, um, you know my uh, uh, um, um, desire to communicate could just depend on on any given any given medium. No, that doesn't come into it. I, I definitely consider myself as, as an artist, um, and I happen to be black, and I happen to render things that are of interest to okay. me. Um, I can uh, um, express honesty that way uh, because this is what I'm concerned about or this is what I personally like to do and like to say, you know, uh, with my art. Um, but um, I, I don't have any problems with the term black artist, but I do just consider myself an artist and you know, happen to be black and right. happen to be living a, uh, a black experience. Yeah. Um, even though I experience things far outside of, of my culture right. or, or where I live in a black community. Mm -hmm. um, but primarily, yes, just, uh, you know, I'm an artist that's uh, just trying to express what I feel and what I think and my opinions. And, like, like what we often do as artists. Because um, I was wanting to create a sort of a motif that would connect all the pieces beyond just the subject matter. And so I decided I would um, show the bullet just as it left the chamber, you know, and most of the pieces anyway. And I would isolate the bullets because there's so much going on compositionally to where I wanted one to be able to focus on that slug and to think about that path of destruction that it's about to cause. And that destruction is, of course, the death, the scene, the, uh, the crime scene, the investigation, and most of all, the families at home going through this experience of this loss and also the community at large losing this talent that was undeveloped, that could have went on to become one that could have possibly did something that will that will impact um, humanity. You know, this this person could have very well became the biologist that discovered some cure for some illness that that we all suffer from. Yeah. Well, you know, you have the various situations. You have the situation of the innocent bystander. You know, you, you have this situation of, um, you know, where I use these Union soldiers who, who fought, you know, in the, uh, in the Civil War and the sacrifices that was made in order for us to have some of the liberties that we have. You know, you have this situation of, um, you know, the girlfriend who's, who's, um, in the crossfire because you know she's hanging out with with her dude that uh, you know that's that's caught up in some some sort of activity that causes someone to to come and and, and just uh, just spray them with with bullets. You know you have the drive-by shooting situation. Um, you have this situation where there's uh, there's this historical reference that I like to interject and weave into into the um, compositions you know, that says, here's what, here's what black people are really about. And it's juxtaposed with what we're not about, yet we are doing it. It's sort of like we are what we are not. One of my favorites is um, the piece that I called uh, Defenders of the Corner. And that, that's the piece where the uh, Union soldiers are defending the corner so that I could, you know, enjoy freely walking down the street without this worry of being lynched or, mm -hmm. you know, or, or snatched up and, and, and chained to a truck and drugged down the street, you know, and that kind of thing. Or I could walk down the street and go to any restaurant I want to go into or any given business and, you know, and, um, and do my business. So um, 
So those Union soldiers, you know, they're protecting this corner for this noble reason, yet they're being undermined by um, some can killing can activity that's protecting a corner, you know, for our, for just drug turf or, you know, or just to um, be able to, you know, freely um, carry out whatever activity that they want to carry out. So there's two different reasons why why, why the corner is being uh, defended. And also, it, um, it has that, that hidden, yet in-your-face critique on, on racism. Because, um, you know, typically when one fights for their country and fights for that sort of a cause, um, it will build a bond, you know, like a tight bond. But for some reason in this country, you know, when the soldiers would return back, African-American soldiers, they would be treated as though they weren't even in the war or if though uh, what they did was meaningless and it didn't matter. And it's very, um, I'm still scratching my head with that one. You know, it sort of says that the, um, the racism ran so deep to where it doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter. You know, you're not, you're not going to get my favor. On that. An explanation point, definitely, okay. yeah. In that piece, it's an oil painting, and it's titled "Turn of Endearment." So it's sort of a spinoff from the uh, from the movie title "Terms of Endearment." Okay. So "Turn of Endearment" it just sh illustrates and shows a character that's getting rid of, and it's like a change of life uh, a statement where he's getting rid of the things that's causing him to be uh, destructive toward the community. And, um, and he's turning his life around. He's embracing a youth, and he's going to introduce the youth along with himself to their heritage in order to strengthen and um, in order to, um, you know, to, to redirect, you know, this activity of um, destruction to um, this activity of, of community building and community sustaining. Here's an artist that, that cares you know deeply and loves people and loves humanity to the point where um, he'll pour, pour out his heart and um, spend his creative time producing something that that people wouldn't necessarily want to purchase and hang on their wall and there's no economic opportunities for doing this but it's solely about trying to um, get the community or help the community understand and, and redirect this, uh, this kind of, you know, kin killing kin uh, situation, you know, to redirect it to, to a better place. So, um, you know, just having youth, you know, view the pieces and, as I said, stop think, reflect, and think about their place in the community. And their place in the community is one where you gain skill, you know, you develop uh, uh, these, these really good habits so that you can turn around and, and make a contribution to your community that's uh, geared toward building and uplifting rather than destruction. The blues, I felt the blues. And I continue to feel the blues about it. It made me think of how it was just a strange place to create this work and not be able to celebrate the achievement of producing the work because of the subject matter, because of the, 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 the reality of the subject matter. So it's sort of like, how do you, how do you celebrate something like this? And so if it wasn't for the manipulation of artist, these artistic and design elements, you know, color, form, light, line, um, uh, composition, and playing with that, you know, that's the only real gratification that I really got out of working, you know. Other than that, also, um, you know, I'm thinking, you know, like a blues artist who would strum the guitar or whatever instrument to sort of... Um, you know, talk about this this hardship, this heartache, 
you know, in order to, to find a place of healing, you know, and then you perform this before an audience or on a recording in the hope that the audience will relate to it and, and, and find a place of healing as well. So, so I'm going through this, this emotion as I'm creating a piece is, you know, I'm thinking about the families and what they're going through and, and I was working on this piece of art and simultaneously there were families somewhere that was just crying and bawling and, and, yeah. and, and just feeling all of this sadness about this loss. So it was, um, it was a lot of um, mixed emotions you know, as I'm, as I'm creating the pieces. And it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily fun to do, but it's, it's the situation in me having to do it trumps my own emotion and it trumps my own feelings toward, toward what I'm doing, you know, to the point where I wouldn't like stop doing it because it's like, okay, I can't handle it emotionally. It's like I have to move past it you know, communicate what I'm communicating. And I mentioned before that I'm, I'm throwing a tantrum, you know, through these pieces because of my own frustration and my own sadness and the blues that I feel about it. So um, another thing too, it's, um, you know, I, I thought about how um, often, you know, it would take, you know, <clears throat> you know, the, the snake venom to become the serum that, that cures the snake bite. Yeah. Um, at all costs, participate. Participate in your, in your own development, you know, by, you know, working on your skills, doing projects, and just constantly participate. But if you don't participate, you don't get the opportunity to practice. And, and when you practice and you're working, you make discoveries. You can discover a different way to, to, to stroke the paint. You can discover some technique. You'll discover, and this comes through participating. It comes through actually working. Um, you, you, know, you can discover just some new way of, of, of approaching art, some new way of, community, uh, of um, communicating. Um, participate. Yeah, participate in, in, in the endeavor, you know, participate in your interest. And um, it's almost like it's a guaranteed uh, educational experience will take place. Well, definitely um, the experience that I've had down here in Bradenton has been one um, that I would cherish, you know, for a life, for a lifetime. Um, you know, everyone's very gracious. Uh, I was really glad to interact with the community, especially with the students, especially with the, with the kids over at um, Horizon Academy. Um, it's just, just been an awesome experience. Um, you know, the family uh, uh, heritage house museum here, you know, on the campus of uh, State College of Florida. It's just been awesome and I, I just appreciate, you know, their interest and in the role that they're playing and uh, trying to do this outreach to the community. So, so this piece is, is titled Your History Too. So that means that it's the uh, second piece in this series that has that title. And um, uh, it shows, you know, the situation where the sacrifices that were made during like the civil rights movement. And, um, you know, there was these sit-ins, like in particular the sit-ins that, that happened in North Carolina. I believe it was Durham, North Carolina. And it's showing the juxtaposition of what's happening now. And it's almost as though they're looking on and looking into the future. And I am asking a question in this piece. What happened between then and now that's causing this situation and this, this now situation here? Um, and, and it's a play on words, uh, your history too. So it's your history in the background and it's your history in terms that it's sort of slang turn or street turn for, you know, the end of one's life, you know, like your, your history is over for you. So, yeah, so this is your history too. Gotcha. So this piece right here is called uh, R.I.P. African Americans. And some people think that that's a little extreme. It's because you're talking about rest in peace to an entire, 
you know, race or entire community of people. And I think that the situation, the occurrence of uh, Ken killing Ken is extremely extreme. So, so this shows a drive-by shooting situation. And in the background, you kind of have the community that's back there sort of looking on if there was a sporting event, you know, sort of curious, sort of uh, 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 in a place where, you know, you know, they don't know what to do, don't have any answers, you know, but yet, you know, they're looking on. So, um, so in this crossfire stream of, uh, of slugs, you know, we have this kid that's on a swing set and I cut the body in half so that I can show in full detail one side and on the other side it's just a line drawing and sort of faded out, which represents the uh, incompletion of this child's life. And on their sweatshirt you have CSU, so it's sort of saying that this kid was had an interest for college and was college bound, and yet they were in the crossfire of a drive-by shooting because this happened so often. Okay. So, okay. so this piece is uh, K to the K to the K. So that's sort of like the, you know hip hop slingo, especially um, um, you know old school hip hop when it was you know words were said like that you know and uh, and and rap music lyrics. So K to the K to the K, so you got the three Ks in there. And this piece points to uh, leadership and leadership that's misguided. So we have the strong image that's up front. Um, you know, we as uh, uh, African Americans have this, uh, this, this, this heritage um, uh, in, in ancient Egypt, you know, where the ancient Egyptians you know, as dark as this guy right here who, um, you know, built pyramids and, and, and sphinx and monuments and that kind of thing and sort of set the stage for, uh, for, for civilization. And um, it's come to a point where that leadership is still there and it's, and it's, and it's in, you know, African-Americans, it's in African-American youth, but this is a situation where it's misguided. So this, so this deals with misguided leadership. A person that's just in gunfire and they're just sort of running away, but yet they're reaching back, uh, pulling the trigger. And we have this crossfire stream of bu bullets again. And I ran this image of the kid again that's on the swings. And yet I crossed out part of the body and put in detail. And the other part is, um, you know, I sort of faded out. And I put a different set of college uh, lettering on his sweatshirt, TSU, could be Tennessee State, Tennessee State University or, you know, any given, any given university. Um, part of the uh, face of this character is sort of broken up and chopped off, and that's actually stone. So it just sort of says that, um, that there's a strength and we're made of some solid and have a solid foundation and, but it's getting uh, uh, destroyed and, and sort of crumbled away. So, so this piece is Defenders of the Corner, and it's showing Union soldiers from the Civil War that are defending this corner for a noble reason, and behind them is being undermined by, by you know, this gangbanger situation that's defending a corner for more selfish reasons more reasons where you, uh, that's geared toward uh, uh, having you know territory to uh, do whatever activity they want to do. So I wanted to put a strong image of a corner being defended, and and I put these ornaments that are kind of flying across. It sort of represents distraction and how you know my uh, my thought of how we're all sort of distracted into things that are shiny and materialism and people's lives are sort of um, almost, you know, in a secondary kind of value uh, um, um, arrangement, you know. So, so this, the distractions is first, you know, life, the value of life is, uh, is secondary. So, so this is also called um, uh, RIP African Americans, and it deals with uh, the two symbols that are in my community that 
uh, that disturbs me, and that is the um, the makeshift memorials where you have the uh, the pole with teddy bears and duct tape that's posting up, you know, posters and sayings and <clears throat> and R.I.P. Um, uh, sentiment and that kind of thing, and also the police crime scene tape, and it's it's just in my community. It's almost if though. Um, you know you're in the black community when you see those polls, you know, and um, knowing that I come from such a such a rich, you know, uh, uh, heritage, uh, to see those polls, it's, it just, it cla in my spirit, in my being, it just clashes with that. So, so, I, so I wanted to just do something that would feature those two, uh, those two icons. Well, what's happening is actually, it's like this, this is a woman, and this is actually a dude, because dudes, you know, they get their hair braided, yeah. you know, so he's just getting his hair braided oh, by, okay. by his girlfriend, and she, she'll end up in a crossfire, okay. you know, okay. so it's almost like he's busting through the door or something, so out of all the pieces, this is, this is the one that's a little bit more abstract than some of the other ones. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of uh, overlapping and and superimposing, and you know, here on this this poster that's that's on the pole here, um, I put like the uh, you know that's the renderings from like the, the slave ship um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, diagrams. Right where they would. Yeah, that you see. Yeah, that it would be yeah. there. exactly. So it has sort of a um, cropped um, image of that. And this gun from this guy who's reaching forward, he's actually shooting into, into the uh, diagram. So this is Your History 3. So it's the third one that has that title. And um, it's showing the situation like in Birmingham where the uh, fire department and the police department was ordered to break up the peaceful demonstrations. And so they're using the hoses, you know, and so these people are making sacrifices for um, for the community and for the future and it's as though when black on black or kin killing kin takes place it's as though you're helping that situation you're helping the police you're helping the fire department you know commit these acts if you gun me down it's like it's like the same thing so um, so I wanted to just you know, show this scene and show this uh, historic imagery, and and again, it's juxtaposed to uh, to Ken killing Ken, and because of this sacrifice, I'm trying to say this is more all the more reason why we should not be um, uh, killing ourselves because of all this unity that took place during this time. So that's a cropped image of a mask out of the uh, Benin society in uh, uh, Nigeria. So it's, uh, it's an Oba mask and, and we have a uh, Ken Killing Ken uh, perpetrator that's putting a bullet into that mask. And that mask just represents me. It represents any African American. Um, and it's saying that by gunning me down, you're wiping away that whole existence. You're wiping away all of that which is invested in me. You know, all of the, um, all of that rich, you know, knowledge that came, that came out of that, that dynasty. So, so this is our turn of endearment, and it's a, a spinoff from the uh, movie title, Terms of Endearment. And it's just depicting a character that's turning around, and you can see it's sort of in this succession of a turn, and that the hand is moving forward and coming around and it's embracing the kid that's pulling up the trousers and he's got his arm around the kid and he's going to introduce the child to, to their heritage, introduce the child to, um, to, to, to its uh, ancestry. And at the beginning, it's getting rid of like the things that's causing this destruction in the community and causing this distraction, you know, this person, could be could be building skill and getting educated in other ways instead of just street education, and they're just throwing away the guns and bags of uh, weed. You know, we got blunts and bling, and 
you know, dirty money, you know, gambling, crack vows, and so forth. And they're just getting rid of that, that mindset, and getting rid of that, acti that activity. And they're just turning, sort of turning their lives around, embracing the youth. Um, and both of them will, um, will grow from the experience of learning about self and giving back to, to the community. Thank you.